What's going on guys? This is Mars Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, we're back at it once again for um, hopefully a few entertaining matches. Now, the purpose of this particular video is not necessarily to just showcase awesome gameplay. Although, I hope you guys um, are actually entertained. The focus of this video is to talk about toggle escaping and Dark Souls 2. Now, granted, the game is not complete. And right now, you have a lot of short sequences that show off right, a few elements from Dark Souls 2. In addition to a rising tide of articles and publications talking about, you know, um, first impressions, um, you know, kind of sort of what to expect and whatnot. Right, and one of the rumors out there is that due to the newest game engine, toggle escaping will be removed. Now, good old Sunlight Blade, shout out to Sunlight Blade, he uploaded a brief video wherein he basically demonstrated what would happen in the absence of toggling. And, you know, of course I'm subscribed, but when I went to his channel to view the video, you know, kind of after it, you know, I, actually I kind of laughed during it, but, um, you know, after the video, you know, obviously I scrolled down to read the comments in the comment section. And I would read some of the comments that would say something like, you know, that's good. We don't need that type of glitch anyway and everything. So, you know what? After reading some of those comments, I felt like it would be appropriate for me to come up with a response in defense of toggling. Right? So that's what's going to be the title of this video. In defense of toggling. Now, first and foremost... Uh, for a lot of you guys that may be on Xbox or on PC and did not come from Demon Souls, you know, a lot of you guys will make the argument of, you know, I don't think it belongs in the game. You know, I, it's a glitch. I will counter that argument by saying, granted, it might be a glitch, but because the same quote unquote glitch was in Demon Souls, and has carried on to Dark Souls, I have reason to believe that it was not a mistake and that it was on purpose. Now, there is no poise in Demon Souls. So, um, one maneuver that a lot of people could do, especially against Claymores and some of these other weapons in Demon Souls, you could toggle escape. I used to toggle escape in Demon Souls, and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people used to toggle escape. You know, because like I said, there was zero poise. And, you know, since there are some armors with no poise and Dark Souls, I have reason to believe that they kept that option out there to prevent people from being stun locked into infinity. So, when people try to make the argument of, you know, I don't think it belongs, like I said before, seeing that toggle escapes existed in Demon Souls. And that it was carried on into Dark Souls. I have reason to believe it was not a mistake that Toggle Escape is there. Now, another thing that I've heard people say is that, well, I mean, there's options. You know, you can just always stack poise. Okay, yes it is an option. Here's my thoughts on stacking a lot of poise. Now, for all of you people, you know, that will try to bring negativity out of what I'm saying. Let me make sure I clarify my point. This is not about saying that I'm better or anyone who stacks poise is worse. It's not a conversation about that. But the point of the matter is to the extent that you stack a lot of poise, the potential is there for you to play a lot more sloppily because there is basically no room for punishment when you can just brush through ha several halberd attacks, several uh, katana attacks, at least one claymore attack, or at least one ultra greatsword attack. 
In other words, if I have 91 poise, you can almost hit me twice with a two-handed claymore and I wouldn't even stagger. So I would be playing sloppily in the sense that the false confidence would just allow me to bogart you and just poise BS you all the time. Now, when I used to play with a lot of poise, and when I kind of look back on some of my older videos, I realized that, you know, there was basically no punishment when I had a lot of poise. I could just brush through pretty much anything. So, did I necessarily learn how to be a little more careful? How to be a little more careful? Did I really learn how to, you know, uh, improve on my evasive strategies? Not really, because in other words, if I could just poise through attacks, where is the real desire for me to evade? Now, during the time that I stacked a lot of poise, I didn't really realize that. But once I got to the point to where I said, you know what, I do not want to become dependent upon poise. I realized that um, once I lowered my poise break, I realized that I played a lot more carefully I um, was a lot more selective with regard to when I attacked and when I chose not to, right? Because I knew at the end I could get staggered, which is basically a punishment in some cases. So one reason why I would rather not stack a lot of poise as opposed to toggling is because I don't want to get sloppy. Like I said before. Having a whole bunch of poise, as a matter of fact, I remember, uh, I think it was yesterday or so, I was in um, the MLB, and I played against this guy, I'm rocking like 33 boys, I think, he's in full black iron armor, full black iron armor, and he used a chaos blade, now, I'm thinking this guy is going to try to outplay me, and you know, because actually he was fast rolling, and full black iron which is like 77 poise and a chaos blade so I'm like okay well I really need to be careful because this guy is just going to poise through everything this guy basically stood in one place and R1 spammed me to death and I hit that guy I swear like three times he didn't even flinch and during the times that I hit him three times he never, he, he never moved, never staggered. He never did anything. So in other words, would he be playing that sloppily if he would have been punished after being hit once or twice with my hall bird? No, he probably will learn very fast. You know what? I can't just sit here and think I'm going to R1 spam somebody. Now, granted, someone will say, well, all you had to do is parry. Well, the argument is not about the degree to which I lost and why. The point that I'm getting at is seeing that he knew he could not be punished for just standing in one place and hitting that R1 like 20 times straight with the Chaos Blade, it will kind of uh, promote sloppy playing. Now, I know some of you guys may say, well, dude, not everybody is all that competitive. I'm good with that. But to the extent that you kind of, you know, en uh, enjoy a challenge and you want to get better at um, implementing certain tactics that's basically who I'm targeting this conversation for now another thing in defense of poise one of the reasons uh, well actually yet another reason why I prefer lower poise builds is because the lighter weight will allow for me to use a wide variety of weapons now there are a lot of guys out there that create builds centered upon one or two weapons this is not me at all anyone who plays against me anyone who you know kind of meets up with me pretty often and you know how I play you guys would know one second I could go Hallbird Claymore next second I could go you know No Shield, Falcons, Y-Hander I mean pretty much anything so Seeing that I use a wide variety of rep of weapons, I prefer lower poise builds because most lower poise builds have low weight. And uh, most higher poise builds have, have, you know, actually, did I say that wrong? Let me kind of rewind that back just in case I said it wrong. 
lower poise bills have lower weight just as higher poise bills have higher weight so in other words to the extent that you're the type of person that do not make your builds you know and center them around one or two uh, weapons having lower poise and lightweight bills allows for you a wide variety of attack strategies because you can pretty much do anything now let's just say I was using giants right because you know you know these guys argument you well you could just go ahead and stack poise you don't have to use a glitch okay let's just say I had full giants let's just say I wanted to fast roll now number one seeing that full giants is almost the heaviest armor set in the game I mean would I really be able to fast roll no I wouldn't right but at the same time I could just go ahead and stagger through anything Okay, so let's just say, okay, Brigade, you're being kind of extreme. Why would you go all the way to the full Giants? Okay, so let's just go down a little bit. Let's say full Black Iron. Or let's just say full Steel. Now, let's just say you go full Steel. And with that full Steel, you still want to be able to fast roll and be able to use a wide variety of weapons. Well, guess what? That full Steel set is pretty heavy. And even with the fat ring, FAP ring and Havel's ring, you'll need a heck of a lot of endurance to be able to use a wide variety of weapons. And I'm not talking about just a long sword and a claymore. I'm talking about like a claymore and its Y-hander, which, you know, will total like 16 units. Or a long sword and a Black Knight, let's just say Black Knight Great Axe, which is like, what's that, 19 units. Well, trying to fast roll with a high poised build, it's almost hard to do. So in other words, the re one of the reasons why I prefer these lighter, these lighter builds with lower poise is because I am not restricted to one or two light weapons. The options are pretty much endless. Number two, you know, seeing that because I, in the event that you guys have not realized, just for the purposes of this video, we all are rocking less than 14 poise. I have 11 poise on the build that I'm using. Lagstab right here, who's been doing a good job at kicking my behind, is rocking zero poise. And I believe Artori is 88. Uh, I think he's either zero or somewhere around you know 14 or, or so himself. I'm not really sure. Now, there's one other person. He's going to be featured last. He wasn't really at the chat at the time, but he did say, hey, man, can we get some fights? So we just so happened to get two. Um, now, he just wasn't in the club, right? So he didn't really know that we were rocking the lower poise. But at the end of the day, the point of it is I'm not just talking just for the sake of talking, you know, because one thing about me, if I'm going to support something, I'm going to demonstrate that you can still be viable. So, you know, I met up with Lagstab and Artorias. I'm like, hey, fellas. I'm thinking about doing a in defense of toggling video. You guys are pretty good at toggling. Not only are they pretty good at toggling, but those guys are pretty aggressive. So in other words, you know, because I know a lot of people, they are so uncomfortable with lower poise that they are super defensive. They just hold their shields up the whole time. And, you know, they're just kind of afraid to get hit because they're afraid to get staggered. But, you know, this short demonstration is just to demonstrate. You guys do not have to be afraid of being attacked just because you have either zero or no poise. Case in point, good old Lagstab right here has been doing a good job of tightening me up. Just as Artorius88 has. Right? So, um, you know, we covered the potential to play sloppily. We also covered... Uh, the fact that at least players like myself I do not like to limit my builds to the usage of one or two weapons I like to be able to use a wide variety of weapons and using lower poise builds will allow that now if they remove toggle escaping is it really realistic that I'm going to be able well actually not going to be able that I would realistically choose a lighter poised build because, in other words, why would I, seeing that the potential is there for me to get stunlocked to death? Now, some people have made the argument, well, maybe they'll remove infinite stunlocking. Okay, well, maybe they remove, quote, unquote, infinite stunlocking. But what if they allow stunlocking for three consecutive hits? Okay, well, assuming that each hit 
Okay, let's just say you're dealing with a Claymore. That two-handed might hit you for, let's just say, 425 damage each. Well, let's just say they discontinue infinite stun locking, and they just say, well, we'll just limit stun locking to three hits. Okay, well, guess what? If there is, you know, if they remove stun, uh, they remove toggling, and they at least do not replace it with something else, you know, some other maneuver to be able to counter stun locking. Well, guess what? That's the potential for 1,275 damage for you to just take. Because, you know, like I said before, even if they remove infinite stun locking, it doesn't mean that you won't be stun locked for maybe two or three hits. But if you guys will notice, with all of us using these lower poise builds, it is very rare that you watch any of us get stun locked like three or four hits consecutively. And as a matter of fact, a lot of these times we're toggling out of the first hit in a lot of cases. Now, maybe it's a little more difficult with a lot of these faster swinging weapons. But in most cases, and you guys have been able to see with your own eyes, right? We're not doing anything special, but we're just demonstrating that the toggle escape can um, produce a situation where you're using lightweight but you're still a formidable opponent. So think about it. If they remove Toggle Escape, where will that leave Dark Souls? They had Toggle Escape in Demon Souls. They have Toggle Escape here in Dark Souls. So if they remove it, you have to do one of two things. If you're going to remove something, you should replace it with something of value. So in other words, let's just say you do remove toggle escaping. There must be a mechanic to combat being stun locked until at least three or four hits. Because if you do not replace toggle escaping with some way to counter being uh, stun locked, then what would be the point of using light armors? There would be no point. As a matter of fact, you, you had might as well make those light armors obsolete. Because no one is going to want to get staggered if they cannot counter um, a stun lock. No one would want to. You know, I remember when the game was first uh, released. And they had those original swing speeds to those great swords. Those things used to swing super fast. Now granted, they slowed it down. But even back then, for a lot of you guys that were here, you know, when the game had first released, those claymores were a beast, especially that Moonlight Greatsword, because it would swing so fast. And if you weren't quick on the draw or could parry, you would be in trouble and could easily be stun locked into infinity. So, in other words, to prevent that from happening, if you remove stun lock and do not replace it, I mean, not stun lock, if you remove toggle escaping, and, does, and don't replace it with something to prevent stun lock, then you might as well just create all armor sets with poise. Because almost no one will ever use a lower to zero poise build. Because no one will want to get stun locked into infinity. So, um, I made a few arguments in support of toggling. I would like to hear some of you guys' uh, comments with regard to toggling. You know, because I've heard some people say, oh, I mean, you could just have infinite poise. First off, none of us have had the infinite poise. All of us are pretty much good at toggling. But if you notice, we don't have infinite anything because we're still taking damage. And in some of the cases when, uh, you know, we may get caught by surprise by a hit, we're still getting staggered. So in other words, you still have to be cautious. We're not just going ahead and sloppily swinging from left to right, you know, kind of similar to what a person stacking a lot of poise would do. We're not sitting there doing that. We have to be a lot more cautious and a lot more careful when choosing when to attack and when to disengage because we know with as little poise as we all have, we could definitely be punished. Right? But seeing that we all have um, somewhat familiarity with toggle escaping it makes these lower poise builds very viable in my personal opinion so like i said before that is just my argument and actually i'm thinking about creating a part two uh, of this series titled in defense of toggling wherein i will use a um, 
a poi stack build. And I'm going to show you pretty much how I would play if I stacked a lot of poise. I wouldn't have to reserve myself. I wouldn't have to be cautious. I wouldn't have to do anything but engage. All right, so go ahead, leave your comments in the comment section, and I'll be checking them out. So until next time, Martyr's Brigade is out.